couple quadratic problems for you. Here's the first one. There's the quadratic z squared plus bz plus c equals zero. What's that? What are b and c? That's what we have to figure out. And all we're told is that b and c are real and that one of the solutions for z in this quadratic is 1 plus 2i. Well, now we do have one of the solutions and we can write the solutions for z in terms of b and c. Well, we can write them just using the quadratic formula. Applying the quadratic formula here, we'll get z is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a in this case is 1 times c. And then the denominator is 2 times a and a is still 1. It's divided by 2. You know what, I'm going to go ahead and break this up because, well, the root we're given is broken up like this. So I'm going to write this as negative b over 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4c all over 2. Now we know that b and c are real, so this has to come out to be real, which means the imaginary bit, that's got to come out of this right here. It tells us our discriminant is negative. And while this tells us this real bit here has to come out to be 1, so we know right away that b is negative 2. And now we see that our roots are 1 plus or minus this mess right here. And we know that 2i has to come out of this. We know that we're going to get our imaginary from right up here. So this is going to have to come out to be 4i. That tells me that what's in that square root has to come out to be negative 16. We know 4 minus 4c has to be negative 16 because then we'll get a 4i up there. Divide by 2, we'll get the 2i that we want. And we solve there. We get minus 4c equals negative 20. c is 5 seems a little fishy to me. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and check this. I'm going to check this by starting from the top with b is negative 2, c is 5, solving this quadratic and making sure that one of the roots comes out to be 1 plus 2i. So we have the quadratic z squared minus 2z plus 5 equals 0. Break out the quadratic formula. We get z equals negative negative 2 plus or minus square root, square the negative 2, minus 4 times 1 times 5, all over 2 times 1. All right, negative of a negative, that's positive, 2 plus or minus 4 squared minus 20, negative 16. And we got that square root in there, we know we have an imaginary number. That gives us our 4i, all divided by 2. And 2 over 2 is 1, 4i over 2. Sure enough, that's 2i. 1 plus 2i is one of our roots, and the other one is 1 minus 2i. That's interesting. The roots are conjugates. Oh, we could have seen that right from the very beginning. Check this out. Think about the quadratic formula here. And whenever we have a, b, and c are real, and the discriminant is negative, Look at how we can write our roots. We can break it up just like we did before. Break this up into negative b over 2a plus or minus square root of the discriminant over 2a. Now, if a, b, and c are real, this is real. And then over here, the denominator is real. If the discriminant is negative, we know that we've got an imaginary sitting up there. So we've got something that's real, plus or minus, something that's imaginary. So when we break those into two different roots, we've got the real thing plus the imaginary thing, and the same real thing minus the same imaginary thing. That tells us the roots are conjugates. And that's what we saw right back here. Real thing plus Imaginary thing, same real thing, minus same imaginary thing. The roots are conjugates. We could have seen that right away. And that gives us a much faster way to solve this problem. We see right away, without going through all that other, other work, we can see right away that the other root is 1 minus 2i because the roots are conjugates. Now, once we have both roots, we can figure out the sum and the product of the roots. 
the sum of the roots. Add these up. 1 and 1 is 2. 2i minus 2i. Those cancel and we just have 2. And the product of the roots, well, we just multiply these. They're conjugates, so we know that we're going to get a real number. Let's go ahead and multiply those out down here. We have 1 times 1 gives us 1. 1 times a minus 2i, 2i times the 1. Those are going to cancel each other out. And then we have minus 4i squared. i squared is negative 1, so we have 1 plus 4. That gives us 5. And now we have the sum of the roots and the product of the roots. Now remember way back we learned the Vieta relationships, the relationships between the coefficients of the roots and the sum and the product of the roots. Now way back then, we used the coefficients to figure out what the sum and the product are. Here we're going to go the other direction. We have the sum, we have the product, now we're going to figure out what the coefficients are. And those relationships told us that the sum of the roots was negative b over a. And in this case, a is just 1. And the product of the roots is c over a. And again, in this case, the, the a is just 1 once again. So now solving this, we get b equals negative 2. And solving this, we get c equals 5. And we never had to touch the quadratic formula. That's pretty slick. All right, on to our next problem. We're looking for the real values of t that make the roots of this quadratic real. Uh, it's certainly, well, I mean, before we sat there, wrote out a whole quadratic formula, we were able to figure out a solution, but then we found a much slicker solution where we didn't have to work through all the details of the quadratic formula. Let's go for the slicker solution first this time. And we want the roots to be real. Well, all that means is that the discriminant is non-negative. If the discriminant is negative, then the roots will come out to be non-real. But if the, the discriminant is zero or positive, then we know that the roots will be real. So we want the discriminant to be greater than or equal to zero. All right, we know how to find the discriminant. We've got b squared minus 4 times a times c. In this case, the constant term is t. And we need this to be greater than or equal to zero. So multiply this out, we get 49 minus 12t. It's greater than or equal to zero. Add 12t to both sides. 49 is greater than or equal to 12t. We divide both sides by 12. And just like that, we see that any value of t that is less than or equal to 49 over 12 gives us real roots. And we are done.